Falkowski? Oh, we've got to go. I'm sure you've got everything. We've got to make no, us I'm late. Not, no, Come sure? on. Oh, 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 I know, no, you haven't. Oh. You haven't. Come on, you no, haven't no, got no, anything. My phone, okay. my mobile. Actually, no, no, I just... you haven't forgotten. Oh, no, 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 here it is, here it is. Oh, oh, oh look, it's such Come a lovely please, day. Please. Not at all. Glad to help. Typical Jan. Ordered flowers for Debbie's birthday and forgot to give the florist the address. I'm not working at the hospital today, Mum. No, no worries. Probably just a mistake. Okay, bye, Mum. It's not your birthday, is it? Uh, Libra, remember? I was thinking the alternative is we hop on a train and buy the wedding champagne in France. Markovsky. Uh, hello? Great excuse to go over there tasting, though, for a weekend. Mm. Valkowski. Hello? Hello? Someone really, really wants to get a hold of us today. Hello? 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 Who's held number? Who is this, please? A sad person's got nothing better to do on a Friday night. Just someone having a laugh. Uh huh. The signal turned off. You're gonna ruin our weekend, Debbie. I'll get you. <sighs> See you at 63 Hillman Street in half an hour. Sure, uh, 20 or 30 calls when we were on the train. All silent calls. All from withheld numbers. 
Until we got to the restaurant and then they started. The text messages. Death threats. Your voice will comfort me. You will never know how much I feel for you. And you've really no idea who this could be from? Well, someone who's done their homework, obviously. Someone I knew we were coming to pool today, someone who knows that Deborah lives at 63 Hillman Street. Ex-girlfriend, maybe? All my ex-girlfriends are intelligent women. I honestly don't think we're making a fuss about nothing here. <laughs> Threats to kill, we take them very seriously, Miss Pemberton, believe me. But this sort of thing... It always turns out to be someone you know. It's no one I know. Yeah. See you in the morning, 11 a.m., outside the pottery. Be there, please. We'll bring it on. I would recommend that you didn't agree to meet this person. Oh, what's to stop me? Threats against your lives? I spent six months in Bosnia, Detective Constable, with the Territorial Army. I know what threats against my life look like. Come on, love, let's just go back to my place. The person making these threats knows your address. You might want to think about not going home. Thanks. No way am I going to a hotel. I'll give in to this, you don't know where it'll land. Oh, happy birthday. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can you put the fan on when you use the shower, please? <sighs> OK. <laughs> Your flatmate thinks you're too good for me. That's because I am. Mwah. Ignore it, Yam, please. Lucky you. Due to gale force, unable to make it 11 a.m. You're joking. It's always next time kiss, kiss, kiss. Is that it? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So, what's it to be, huh? White lace or yellow waterproof? There's no way I'm going to discuss my wedding dress with you. It's bad luck. Oh, God. For God's sake. Here, give it to me. Give it to me. Come on. Give it to me. Debbie. <laughs> kiss, kiss, <laughs> bloody kiss! <laughs> okay, that's enough. Come on. Give it back. Halloween Eve, please don't mind the full switch. Tell me. Uh, it's just words, it can't hurt you. Let's get inside and put up the drawbridge. Do you leave the lights on again? No. Hmm. That's which. Oh, you got your smart gas. Quick, me off the boat. Get out! What? What?
Well, if I told you the address, it wouldn't be a secret, would it? But we're not going to climb in the window and turn the gas on, are we? <sighs> well, that's something I'd like to see. And be serious for once. The police say we have to stop living on the boat and find a weekday flat in London. Tell nobody where it is. Not work, not friends, not even you. Every psychiatrist knows many disturbed and dangerous people. It's not a patient, Dad. I can't see any hospital connection at all, in fact, because this person knows so much about Debbie. She's never set foot in the place. Why can't you just change your mobile numbers? <sighs> we called our service provider. They said anyone can phone up at any time and find your number. In the wonderful world of mobile phones, there's no such thing as X directory. Not yet, anyway. No, you never walk alone. Jan's life will be okay, yours hell. Where are you going to hide? You become death sentence to Jan now. You are not worth it, nasty tart. Oh, and this came under my door. Thanks, Debbie. I appreciate you taking the time. And remember... Isolate the caller. Never discuss the messages with anyone. I know it's hard. Oh, and we did block incoming calls from without numbers, like you said, but it only gave us a couple of days' peace. I never even knew you could send text messages from public call boxes. Oh, see you next week, then. Yeah, take care, yeah? I love this. You bridesmaid, me bride? Not enough sparkle. Oh, you and your sparkly. Here, this will brighten you up. Go on. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting my teeth whitened. What do you think? Shoes, dress, matching teeth. I'm thinking... Debbie? Debbie? <sighs> Tell me what it says. You know I'm not allowed. You want to talk to someone? I can talk to you. Good luck. All calls and texts were always made from internet cafes and libraries. Places where she must know we can't trace her. But since we've put a block on all withheld numbers, she started using public phone boxes instead. Look here. Waterloo Station last Saturday. Then it all goes quiet for a couple of hours, then bingo! Area code 01202. Welcome to Pool. Now, nobody's ever heard a voice, so remind me why we're so sure it's a woman. Gay admirer? Jan would love that. Mr. Macho. What with his Gucci job and his Playboy lifestyle and being a powerboat champion. Yeah, and you ain't jealous. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Pool. A phone box on every street corner. Surveillance? On my budget? They're getting nastier. The text messages. More violent, personal. Against him? Against Debbie. Was she coping? She's fine. She's a champion racer as well. She's a good victim.
Hello there. Hello. Hi, this is Deborah Pemberton. I'm just ringing up to see how my wedding arrangements are going. No. No. No, of course not. No, of course I didn't. I don't know who would do that. Our wedding reception. What? She texted me, name the hotel. So I rang and they said, oh, we thought you'd called it off. So it's definitely a woman then? It's like she says to me, like she's sending me a quiz and the texts are clues and I have to figure it out and she's always one step ahead. I, hang on, she found the hotel. So they heard a voice then? He says she has a Spanish accent. No, I don't know anybody like that. Look, I'm at the hospital. I'll call you later. this phone box before. Come on, darling, come to daddy. Bastard. No, burn. Deborah Tart fancy whitening her teeth, her mouth could burn. I don't understand. I made an appointment at the dentist to get my teeth done in time for the wedding. Well, you didn't tell me. I didn't tell anybody, not, not you, not Mum, just Gemma. Oh, right, well, there you go. Oh, of course it's not Gemma, I'd only just told her. <sighs> Jan, my, Jan, my point is, how could she know? I mean, has she tapped my phone or, or... Oh, my God, maybe she's got into my room or... or my bin. The idea that she... It was that article in the Daily Telegraph with my picture. Do you remember about me racing in the only female Zap Cat team? And it said I was your fiance. I'm sure it did. Maybe that's how she knows about me. Bitch, a bullet waiting for you. Can't escape. You ask for it. Go fuck someone else. 
Oh, and this is a good one. Big news. Debbie Tart in bed with two men. Photos coming soon. It's been hard enough to find one man I want to be with. Jeez, Debbie, you just don't read the bloody thing. I have to read them. I have to log them and give them to the police. Me too. The difference is I write them down, I blank them out. I don't inflict them on you. I'm not allowed to talk to my mum. I'm not allowed to talk to Gemma. The only person the police will let me talk to is you. Every moment we spend talking about it gives her another victory. You see that? We have to ignore it and get on with our lives. Right now, I haven't got a life. Yeah, I can't survive this if you won't let me talk about it. I can't see how that helps. Where's the gorgeous Debbie to cheer us on? On our way to London. This is Jan Tartowski. Please leave a message. This is Jan Falkowski. Please leave a message. I'm on a train. I've just had a text saying there's a gun pointed at my head. Oh, I don't know what to do. Get your coat, Brian. Come on. What is it? Come on. It's Debbie. You get another drink if you like. Where? I have a bottle of champagne on the boat. Too. <laughs> well, 
I don't know. The uh, the danger, maybe. The buzz. The control. The power boats I can control, unlike the rest of my life. Other than that, I don't analyze it too much. I thought you said you were a psychiatrist. Mm. That's exactly why I don't analyze it too much. Two world records, and you are still a little boy racer with go for us to stripes. <laughs> Where's the loo? Um, I think it must be down there. I... This isn't your boat, is it? <laughs> You're great fraud. Well, it's a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, there isn't champagne on my boat. And, in fact, there isn't a loo on my boat. some private security for the wedding. Oh, God. Well, don't look at me like that, Irene. The police are bloody useless. Morning. Oh, uh, breakfast. No, no, just got to get to work. Debbie, me and your mother had 23 nuisance phone calls from that woman on Saturday. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. How did she get your number? It doesn't matter. It's not important. We can cope. But death threats, you should have told us before, love. Why? Your father would die to protect you, Debbie. We, we both would. I've got to get to work. You have seven messages. Message one. Seven of those on my answer phone this morning. You missed the big excitement. Two rather hot young constables crawled over everything with this electronic thingy, like something out of MI5. Do they really think this office is bugged? Besides, he's old enough to be my dad. Girlie, you'll get hurt. I can stop this any time I want to. <clears throat> Call me hormone and what what this huge thing for having chips. <laughs> Sam, Debbie, you're good at exams. Hello. 
Look at these. Yang got many lovers. Don't expect him to be loyal. Oh, <laughs> don't take any notice. Of course it's not true. He loves you. Your lodger is a liar. She tell me everything. She's always been right about everything else. Boxes, probably. Let's get back inside. I can't leave her. I can't leave her on her own. It wouldn't be fair, Bethan. We get some. Um... We both, um... We get phone calls, text messages, you know, emails. Can't trace who or where they're from. Abusive. You know, threatening. Some Spanish woman. I mean, Debbie gets the worst of it. It's a fucking nightmare. So you've got a stalker? Wow. Well, it couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. Can I confirm, please, the correct date and the address? Could you just give me your name, please? I am a friend of the family, you see, and I am invited to the wedding. Yeah, I just, I can't actually give out any uh, personal information because of the Data Protection Act. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I explained the situation already. I am a friend of the family. I told you already. Why are you so stupid, so unhelpful, so unfriendly? Give me your name. I shall complain to your boss. Give me your name. What? Oh, what is it? Don't answer it. She's got a Spanish accent. <coughs> Jan Polkowski has a stalker with a Spanish accent. Would you please not answer it? Don't pick up. Don't pick up. No, no, no. Don't pick up. Extension. 
what? That woman has been a text. Yam, boats have been tampered. We'd get out of water before explode. Bloody woman. When's it gonna stop, eh? Alive? I'm sorry, really sorry. But she's been ringing my chambers, emailing me, texts, death threats against the children. We've had to warn the school not to let anyone pick them up but us. Yeah, everything changes when you have a small child. Small child, small problems. Big child. Well, as you see. <laughs> oh, Bernice, sorry. Sorry. So how about you, Dad? I think we must take seriously the risk that somebody will be killed at the wedding. So, neither my brother nor my father will see me married. Oh, I shall be there. Old men can flirt with danger. Why don't we just end it? The whole thing. Let's split up now. I don't want that. If it's the only way to make it stop. Who says it will stop? You want to deal with this on your own? No. I'm not letting her win, Dick. We'll stick it out. So we're not cancelling the wedding? Just postponing? Yes. Yes. I've got an idea. She's texted us to prove she knows the date, the time, the location, guest list, menu. Yeah, that's before we start on all these threats about the gunman. A gunman paid will bullet you down, bang, 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 or you deserve dirty FDT. FDT? Work it out. Um, sorry, yeah. Fucking Deborah Tart. Prepare your funeral, not a wedding. You be dead, you be dead, you be dead. You will be burnt down in your wedding dress. Even if I do die in a fire, even if I get shot, I've got this burning curiosity to look her in the eye. I want to see if she turns up to my wedding singing, It Should Have Been Me. No, absolutely not. Dad, Dad, you're not listening. The idea is we let everybody think the wedding's going ahead for real, but it's a sham, a trap. We smoke her out and catch her red-handed. Relying on Dorset's finest for that part, are you? I just don't want to feel small anymore. Just answer me one thing, Jan, would you? Sure. Just one thing. Do you really want to marry my daughter? Yes, I do. And last night, the chef at the hotel started receiving texts as well. Right then, the crosses indicate all the phone boxes that we know she's used before. Typically, it'll be around Robin. Deborah's landline, Deborah's mobile. A mom's landline, a mom's mobile. Jan, Gemma, Jan's parents, his brother, old Tom Cobley, and then back to the beginning. Which should give us plenty of time. Can I just say? Yes, Foggy? There's how many telephone boxes between her and Bournemouth? <laughs> We are well overdue our stroke of luck on this job. I have to go. I love you. Why? 
one way or another, by the end of today, it'll be over. Okay. I have to go. I'll call you. My daughter's wedding day. Flower girls, they're an armed policeman. It's not very high tech, is it? She rings up on the landline, I have to dial 1471 and then call the police on the mobile, or vice versa. It's worse here. The only way I can get a reception on my mobile is with one foot in the garden. I've got to go. Good luck. So now we just wait, yeah? Of course Someone he thought was a friend. Someone who he shagged. Who's got the hump because he didn't go back for seconds. I'm thinking, tall, glamorous, businesswoman type. Powerful, classy suit, killer heel, stocking, suspenders. Sharon Stone. <laughs> yes, I know it's Fantasy Island, but I still think he knows her. It always turns out they know their stalker. <laughs> you can laugh, Steve, but she bloody terrifies me. <laughs> looking for a rational explanation, but what if there isn't one? What if we never know why she's doing this? Here we go. Hello? I remember that one especially. Oh, here we go. Debbie? First one's in. Just take your time. Double nine six. Double nine six. Zero one, zero two, one three. two three. Brilliant. Where are we, Steve? Chapel Street. Suspect call being made from Chapel Street. Any units in that area? Alpha one negative. Oh. Alpha two on way from High Street. ETA two minutes. Call it two. No chance. Come on. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. No, there's no one in there. Alpha 2. Telephone is free. No suspects at the location. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, mate, get out of the way, will ya? Idiot. Keep going. Keep going. Hello? Okay, go. Suspect call received from halfway along the key. Oh, one's around there. That's what's meant to be. Come on. Nothing. Nothing. Alpha 2. Telephone is free. Come on, come on, come on. Nine double three double seven four zero. Yep, nice one, Jim. We've got that. Thanks, bye. Suspect call now being made from the corner of Market Fold and Acre Lane. Any units? Alpha one ETA, three minutes. <sighs> Suspect call from Lagman Street, any units? This is still on the left down here, but our one's around here. This is Alpha no, 1 negative. Alpha 2, telephone is free. Oh. Suspect call from Hay Lane, any units? Passing two front now, over. We're on a wild goose chase, mate. Oh. Alpha 1, no sign, empty. Over. We've been up there, try down here. Come on, my sweet. It'll be all right. You will have your wedding, and it'll be twice as good as ever you hoped. Promise you. Promise you, my darling, it will. Oh. Shall be. Any units in that area? Past it. We just 
location now. It's up there. Visual suspect in telephone box. Ten units in the area to assist. We've got the suspect under observation. I see two. Female, dark hair. She's leaving on foot. She's walking towards the seat run. Stand by! Maria. Maria Marchese. No. No, I never heard of her. So? Did you live there alone? My friend now and then coming and going, but not permanently. He is not a well person. That is why I didn't call him today, because he would get panicky. What's wrong with him? He suffers from depression. Severe depression. He was in hospital three times, in St. Clement's Hospital, around the corner from where I live. Do you know the names of the doctors who looked after him while he was there? Yes. His regular doctor is Dr. Falkowski. What's his first name? No idea. He's not my doctor. Yeah, so the... You don't talk to somebody for half an hour who's just a friend. <laughs> Go on, you can. Hello, you. Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah, he is. I'll just get him for you. Yeah, me too. It's the police. Oh, uh, I need to go. Yeah. No, bye. <laughs> They're saying she's Argentinian, not Spanish. Falkowski? Sorry, say again? God, yes, um, I do remember. It was, um, it was an outpatient. A patient? She was a patient! No, not a patient. A patient's girlfriend. A patient's girlfriend? No, sorry. Uh, yes? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. She was, um... I mean, she was a nobody, you know. She was just a total nobody. Why am I not allowed to be there when they search my flat? Because we're interviewing you now. Yes, but I think it's unfair for me not to be there. You've been arrested while we investigate these threats. As part of that investigation, we're allowed to search your flat. What will we find there, Maria? I did not threaten anyone. And I have no reason to threaten anyone. Answer my questions, please. My kitchen. There is a cooker, a fridge. My bedroom, there is a bed and a table full of books. And my bedside table is full of books. I thought we were going to find a shrine to Jan Falkowski. You know, photographs all over the walls. <laughs> right. You watch too much telly. <laughs> Just a list of Powerball events, a diary, grocery for the wedding or so. Just rubbish, really. Steve. For the first time in my life, yes, I am head over heels. Who with? You. 
who bring me the most wonderful feelings to my soul. I can't wait any longer to tell you how much I need you. I would love to hold you in my arms and just dream. Please allow me for a second to be yours. I could have copied that from somewhere. Was it about Jan Falkowski? No comment. Do you love him? No comment. I'm going to show you a letter now that was pushed under Debbie Pemberton's door around about the 4th of December. Jan, call me tonight, lover. Kiss, kiss, kiss. No comment. Do you want to say anything else, Maria? Because we're going to stop now. Yes. I would like to once again say that I have no intention to harm myself or anyone else. Interview concluded at 16.42 hours. Finally, madam, this is a lady of good character. A lady with a fixed address. A lady with full-time employment as a shop assistant. A British citizen who has lived in this country for 25 years. I would respectfully suggest that she is a lady who could be bailed. She's got bail. So she's still out there. Still free. I never expected you to make it better overnight, but just some support. Someone's arms around me. Someone telling me we can make it through this. And I never expected you to be so weak. Never expected you to let it get to you. If this hadn't happened, we would have been married by now. Are you having an affair? grow up you think you can survive everything the world throws at you but we didn't survive this did we we didn't measure up you know what I'd like to kneecap her for what she's done but I'd like to shake her hand too Maria Marchese's not my enemy you are. wedding, my relationship, my self-respect. And now you tell me that you're letting her off scot-free. No, I'm telling you that the Crown Prosecution Service have dropped the case. Same bloody thing. Not the police, the CPS. They have to make a decision where there's a realistic chance of getting a conviction. And what about the, the, the text messages and the phone calls and the, the death threats? God, the bomb, the bomb threat. You almost had to close the marina. Look. We can prove that someone made these phone calls, but we can't prove that that someone was Maria Marchese. I'm sorry, Debbie, but it's out of my hands. Oh, oh. All forensic examinations have proved negative in relation to Maria Marchese. There is nothing we can place before the court to show that she sent any notes or text message. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and uh, here's a note on victim sodding support. <laughs> Draw. 
passing the buck and it's an absolute disgrace. So straight away I rang the senior crown prosecutor and the chief constable and I insisted on speaking to both of them. And you know what they said? They'd look into it again. But I'm not holding my breath. And the phone calls have stopped though, thank God. Yeah, I haven't heard a peep out of us since you got arrested. And that's how I wanted to stay. I don't want a name mentioned. This is Auntie. Oh, yeah, sure. Doctor? Put it down. Kiss Maria. How dare you call me here? Why have you passed my friend on to another doctor? If you don't take him back, I'll report you to the General Medical Council for negligence. Fuck off and do your worst. You drunk? Don't you talk to me like that. Who do you think you are? You treat people like dirt. I get you for it. I kill you. Man. And I can prove it. I'll call you. But right now. I've been told to ask for a... Uh, Dr. Falkowski. A new DC nation? From Operation Sapphire, yes, sir. Uh, thanks for coming in. Do you want to uh, come in here, sir, or it's a bit quieter? Why, what's going on? <sighs> Operation Sapphire is the Metropolitan Police Service Unit dealing with sexual offences in London. Yes, and? Dr. Falkowski, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the rape of Maria Marchese. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your case if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say will be given in evidence. But you haven't got any evidence. Did you come this way, Because sir? I didn't do it. I'm an innocent man. sitting in his office there was no light on because a lot of sunlight was coming in the windows he offered me a drink and a coke appeared to me I'm a person who drinks fast I don't go sipping here and there and I start drinking and suddenly I feel dizzy I feel really odd the next thing I remember I'm lying on the floor and I could see things spinning around, and I, my body was numb. It was numb. And a voice was saying, It's all right. It's all right. And I could see the body on top of me. It was Dr. Falkowski. What exactly do you think he has done, Maria? I strongly believe he have raped me. Uh, Deborah Pemberton. Hi up. I'm on the way to the airport. You've got five minutes. DC Simon Nation. Uh, I rang earlier. Four and a half minutes. <laughs> Just let me ask you, uh, are these yours? Come on, what's this? That's right, Dad. Do I look like Bridget Jones? <laughs> Come on, let's go in. Debbie, wait. What faith I had in the police and courts and British justice, you can forget it. I lost it when that woman ruined my life and nothing got done about it. So Jan can look after himself because I've got a life to live. 
and only one life to live it in, which starts today. Oh, you know what? If you did rape her, I hope it bloody hurt. Okay, yeah. Uh, Marks of Sparks confirms the Nick has stayed in the range for six to eight months. And I can confirm they're definitely Maria's. The DNA results are back. Yep. That's Maria there. And that, that DNA there, that's Dr. Jan Velkovsky. <sighs> Things go wrong for no reason. One minute you're walking down the street, the next a ton of bricks falls on your head. It's random. It means nothing and you can't blame anybody. How can you hold it all in like this? How can you not let it get to you? I'm in pieces. Because if I let it in for one second, I'd be lost. Yeah, look at me. I believe you. I know you're innocent. You think you should tell your parents? No. I'm not giving her the power to upset more lives. But you're going to tell the hospital? No. So he slipped her a drug that's going to put her out for three days. He's raped an unconscious woman on the office carpet and put her over his shoulder and wrangled her down two flights of stairs into an Audi TT. He's then pulled her back out of the car and carried her up three floors to her flat and got all her clothes off her. <laughs> He's a fit man, Sarge. <laughs> this man's arrogance has no limits. He disrupted and destroyed my life from June 2002 to the point I am a shadow of the self-confident person I once was. He took advantage of his position he misused drugs. But Maria, are you sure you can't help us a bit more with that date? June. He raped me in June 2002. I explained the situation already. I visited my friend every day in the afternoon around 6 o'clock. June. He raped me in June 2002. But which day? Every five minutes I get arrested. Every five minutes I have police searching my flat. So she's loud, plain, and foreign. This means she's got to be a liar. Malcolm, I like to believe women. There's just something about her stories, Kay. You struggle to believe them. I'm prosecuting 60, 70 sex crimes at any one time. I have never come across a false rape claim, or only when the people were in a relationship already. Your Dr. Falkowski is a consultant psychiatrist. If he's also a rapist, it makes him a very dangerous man. Why won't you talk to me? Oh, God. Just talk to me. No, you leave me alone, okay? There's nothing more you can do to me. Jan! 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 Yes, hello. I have a letter for the director of the health cross. Yeah, sure. Um, would you just like to give it to Tom? Yeah, that's it, love. Just pop it in there. You knew I had a stalker. I've been completely open about that. And, and I'm not being charged with any offence. And the woman who wrote that letter is not a patient at this hospital. So you cannot suspend me from my job. You're a specialist, right? 
A hundred rapes come through our office every year. You ever meet a victim like her? And look at him now. Staring down the wrong end of a ten-year sentence. Chris, there's no way around that DNA, is there? This is a meticulous woman, sir. She keeps a diary every day. And every day she notes the weather. Coldish AM. Hot after lunch. Never mentions rape. Detective Sergeant Davis, you have a DNA profile with a full match for Dr. Falkowski? Yes, there was clearly a sexual encounter. But does this case pass the test of a realistic possibility of conviction for rape? Only a jury is competent to decide who's telling the truth here. Charge him. Jan David Farkowski, you are charged that between June the 1st and June the 30th, 2002, you committed rape against Maria Marchese. How do you plead? Not guilty. Everyone believes him. Hmm? The judge, the police, the press. Everyone believes her instead of me. He was nine years old when the Russians invaded Poland. They sent him far into the north to a forced labor camp in the Arctic Circle. And finally, he made his way to England and put himself through medical school, God knows how. And nobody in the hospital could pronounce his name. It's a lot to live up to. He brought us up to be brave and never complain. And now he's an old man and he's got to listen to this. I never had a case like this. Morbid jealousy, yes, but in all my years in psychiatry... I... Dad, please, just don't waste your time thinking about why. I don't. I don't care why she's done it. Understanding her just reduces the severity of what she's done to us. To us and to poor Debbie. Such a long time since you were arrested and you didn't tell us. Maybe it's better we didn't know. Bethan? This is your fault. Silly. I'm not clever enough to make it rain. It's your fault I was using a condom. This is the 21st century, Jan. Everyone has heard of safe sex. And what difference does it make anyway? Worked it out, Bethan. That morning I found the bin turned over and I said it was foxes, but it wasn't. It was her. She's gone through the bins and she's found the condom and she's taken it home and smeared it in her underwear. Yeah, and that's mad. No, mad! It's me getting locked up for something I didn't do! Because I slept with an airhead tartan, didn't love me enough to go on the pill!
Don't worry, I forgive you. I know you're only angry because you're so scared, yeah. And I know that's something you're probably never going to admit to. But you have got to stop taking this out on me. When we first got together and we stayed in bed the whole time, I think maybe I was just trying to prove this was special. Prove it was somehow meant to be or something. Or maybe it just wasn't. I think I was just looking for somewhere to hide. All my life I've thought, you must never, ever let anything get to you. And nothing ever did. Until Maria Marchese. Until you. Actually. We both betrayed other people for this, Jan, and I think we're paying for it. Everyone I love is paying for it, and you worst of all. I don't recognize myself. I don't know why you stay. Because I remember what you were like before. Yeah, I can be that man again. Look, I can be better than him. I was educated in a convent. My parents used to leave me there Monday to Friday and I used to cry. But always in the back. Like a lot of evidence on this list, her diary is missing from the actual box. But the police are supposed to disclose all the evidence to us. Well, they've given her property back to her when they dropped harassment charges. Yes, well, that's either totally incompetent or totally corrupt. I remember a nun say, no matter how hard you cry, no one will ever hear you. You become very tough because of a bringing like that. Three. There are three people's DNA on this chart. Jan Falkowski, Maria Marchese, and someone else. So hang on a sec. If she's saying... Listen, listen. When did I meet you? Um, summer 2003. Exactly. And that's a whole year after she said I raped her. So if we can prove that the third DNA trace is yours... Because my DNA is on the, the condom that she took from the bin. I can't have raped her in 2002 and her entire story falls down. Can we prove it before the trial? We hope so. But this third DNA trace is clearly here in the original Forensic Science Service report. We concluded laboratory contamination was the likeliest cause of the third DNA trace. There are seven alleles in the profile that could not have come from either Maria Marchese or Jan Falkowski. What the defence have found is an eighth allele that could only have come from one candidate. Bethan Ansel. The defence findings could support that conclusion, yes. His trial's due to start on Monday, three days' time. Okay. Drop it. Drop the case against Jan Falkowski. Hi. They think I should sit here, throw a few drinks down me, and then walk away. I didn't quite say that. You know the deal. She claims she's a rape victim, she gets anonymity. I don't get that privilege. You know, my name is out there, accused of rape for all to see. I'm a doctor. I need to clear my name. I want to see that woman stand trial. Guess it isn't over. First, new message. I insist on meeting with you. 
If you were any good at your job, you would be working together with the General Medical Council. Why do you let this rape get away with it? I want a meeting with Miss Case Scudder. I am a victim of rape, but she drops the case! Marchese? Yes? I'm arresting you on suspicion of perverting the course of justice. Constant phone calls and messages on my voicemail. She's so angry. It's so threatening. Every night I walk home, I expect to see that my house is burned down. And we've got this poor old cat. Chips and... I keep thinking, you know... Bunny boiler. Hmm. Okay. We've got to look at the evidence against her. What charges did you have in mind? There are five counts on the indictment against Marchese. Mostly harassment, threats to kill. And the big one, perverting the course of justice and making that false allegation of rape. Now, this fabrication about the condom, well, it's irresistible. She's never given us a date for the alleged rape. Mm. Go back to the hospital, get every single record anybody kept that summer. Admin, nursing, medical, pharmacy, you name it. Get dates for everything and don't take no for an answer. And re-interview all the witnesses. Now, this, this ex-girlfriend, Debbie, obviously, she's... <laughs> no chance. What? Wronged woman. Marchese's defence team will try and destroy Jan Fikowski in the witness box. We need Debbie. Hello. Hello, this is DS Malcolm Davis. Is that Deborah Pemberton? Yeah, this is Deborah Pemberton, but the person you want is the one that gives a toss. Don't hang up, Debbie. We've charged her with very serious offences. And you're scared she'll get off because Jan's going to come across as a lying, conniving bastard who had it coming to him. What if she does it to someone else? Debbie, you can do the right thing here. You can stop another innocent person suffering like you did. Jan's on his own. This much is agreed that there is evidence that your DNA was found in a pair of knickers that she handed into the police. Yes. Are you able to explain how that may have happened? I think Miss Marchese has taken a condom I have used with my partner, Beth and Ansel, from my bin, and then just poured the contents of that condom into her underwear. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Falkovsky. If you stay there, there'll be some more questions. Dr. Falkovsky, I appear for the defense. You see, it remains my client's case that you stupefied her with a drug sometime in early June at around six o'clock in the evening or thereabouts and ravished her. No. No, that never happened. That is what she says, and I suggest that it did. Now, do you list as one at least of your many areas of expertise a knowledge of psychopharmacology? I have a certain knowledge. What I suggest is that you concocted a cocktail of drugs in order to render her, to stupefy her. Completely untrue. I had no drugs available to me. It is a complete fabrication. You are saying that Maria Marchese is a liar? Yes. I'm going to suggest that you were a massive, complex and compelling liar yourself. It's completely untrue. When the summer of 2003, at the very least, was your personal life not based on a tissue of lies and deceptions towards people you were claiming to love? It wasn't based on that, no. It was a very difficult time. A constant nightmare. It was the most unpleasant and difficult to describe experience in the world. 
I'm just getting down to the fundamental question of your honesty. I'm essentially an honest person. <laughs> Dr. Falkov. Let him finish. I regret the way things turned out. I am completely confident that we would have been married had the stalking not started. We were very happy prior to that. Well, people might say in the old-fashioned way, that man is a bounder. It's not something I'm proud of. She's gonna get away with this. Guess who? No, don't hang up. Listen. So why did you get in? I don't want to be a victim anymore. At one point I was receiving probably ten death threats a day by text. Standing here, I will obviously seem very strong. Inside, I was a wreck and a shell. Without wishing to dwell on it for more than a moment or two, how low did you feel at the end of all this? At one point, I actually contemplated suicide. When they threaten to kill your family and they've taken everything away from you you have nothing left to give there is nowhere else to go and I did nothing wrong I just happened to be in the wrong place the wrong time dating the wrong person it is the worst ordeal ever it is a living hell. If you know your enemy, you can do something about it. I had no idea who this nasty, vindictive, evil person was. I thought that maybe if I did put a stop to it, that I couldn't be hurt anymore. That <laughs> she couldn't get me. <laughs> scripted it better myself. But? But, Maria Marchese goes into the witness box tomorrow, my best shot at proving her a liar is buried in hundreds of pages of doctor's handwriting. Your full names, please. Maria del Carmen Marchese. I want you to clarify that you've never been in any kind of trouble with the police before, please. Yes, that is correct. In 2002, did you have an infatuation with Dr. Falkovsky? No, I never. 
Now take your time because it's an important question. When you were first asked questions on the 6th of September about the alleged harassment, were you completely honest with the police? No, I wasn't. I did not tell the incidents that happened in June 2002. Uh, this is all about him raping you, is it? Yes. Why did you not say anything at that stage? Because the man said if I would tell anybody, he would kill me. There will be more questions for Mr. Fennels. Mr. Marchese, I, I want to make sure that if at any stage you do not understand my questions, you will say so. Yes, I will. As we see from your interview, you had some 16 pounds in change on you when you were arrested, didn't you? I don't know. Do you think that's a slightly unusual amount of change to be carrying? Not at all. It's very useful for phone boxes. I did not. Once again, phone or send any messages to these people. I have better things to do than wasting all my time and money looking after these people. And it's plain, isn't it, that the intention of the person sending those messages was to try and destroy their relationship, isn't it? Well, it is plain, isn't it, from the... Or do you disagree? Is your silence... Do you have an answer you wish to give? I have not sent those messages. In relation to your allegations of rape against Dr. Volkovsky, you maintain, do you not, that he raped you? That is correct. You understand, do you not, that the Crown says that that is a vicious and evil lie? I'm sorry, you are very abusive to me. Not only I have been raped, but on top you are pretending as if I done it on purpose. That's awful. I feel abuse. Your Honor. Uh, in no way am I going to allow you to be bullied or abused. I've already been abused by this doctor and I, I just can't take it no longer. We'll take a break now. My Lord. <laughs> I want to look with you now, please, to see if you can help the jury with the day in June that this rape supposedly took place. I was visiting the hospital. I can't put a date, or else I would have given it already to the police. Because we know, don't we, that your friend was discharged on the 19th of June? Yes. So there are 18 evenings, aren't there, that are potential candidates? Yes. And if one were to write down the numbers, 1 to 18, the days we can cross off are the 1st, the 3rd, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. Because we know from the nursing records and the drug records that those are the days that your friend was not there. Yes? Well, we can rule out the 18th, because you've agreed that, and, and the 2nd, because it was a Sunday and Dr. Fakovsky wasn't working on a Sunday. Can't we? Yes. We can also rule out the 6th, because you went to see your doctor to get your passport photo signed. Yes. Which means we can also rule out the 4th and the 5th, because, according to your own account, you didn't leave the house for three days. I cannot give you a date because I dispose of the diaries. There's only one day left in June when this could even theoretically have happened, and that's the 11th, isn't it? I was going every single day. And on the 11th of June, page 1286, if anybody wants to look at it, your friend was on day leave, and it says, he went out again for his day leave and came back after supper. So we can see in all reality, there's no day in June upon which this rape could have taken place. The doctor has raped me. I've no way of getting this condom 
as the doctor has explained. I did not lie. The doctor has raped me with the differences that he is highly protected from each corner, either by the General Medical Council or the police. He's very fortunate. He's been protected all along by the police, no matter what I complain. And he's still working. And he's still treating vulnerable people. Well, he's been cleared by all of them, hasn't he? Not in my part. He is not clear. He's the man that raped me. <laughs> I did not commit these offenses. He is a rapist! This was a sustained and terrifying campaign. Threatening, abusive, frightening. You continue to deny the offenses and to say you're not guilty, as you're entitled to do. I take into account that you're a lady of excellent character and that the prison sentence will be painful and hard, but it is difficult to imagine a more serious case. A wholly innocent man could have gone to prison. Is there any remorse? None. The impact on Deborah Pemberton was quite extraordinary. No one who was here in court and heard her evidence will ever forget it. Nine years. Nine years! Maria dug her own grave when she decided to go in the box. Should have kept the trap shut. Mm. I still don't know what she really thought was going on. Perfectly obvious to me, she believes the whole thing. It's completely delusional. Sad, really. Oi, oi. Take us out. You're looking really well. I've upgraded to a better class of fiancé. A better way of life for you. I've hated you for so long. You wanted what I had and... Hey, careful what you wish for, right? <laughs> it's over now, though. Yes. It is. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Debbie, I know you didn't have to put yourself through the trial. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I feel like Beau de Sio. Hey, the man of the hour! <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs>